Hello, it's All Your Bass Chris here with another Mr. Video. This time I'm going to show you how to install a fresh version of Workbench 3.1.4 on the Minimig core on the Mr. First of all, you need to boot into your Minimig core. Actually, first of all, you need to procure yourself a version of Workbench 3.1.4. It is sold by Hyperion Entertainment and it costs 30 euros, which is a very reasonable price for the latest operating system for the Amiga. Once you have that, you need to transfer the files across to the Mister. If you don't know how to do that, there are other tutorial videos on my channel showing you how to set up a mister and I include how to transfer files in that. So what you'll need from the package that you've just downloaded is you will need the 1200 version of the kick ROM. So as you can see, this is booted up as a stock A1200 with no hard drives, no discs in it, just the 3.1 kick ROM. So let's start configuring our system. So for memory, we leave, we'll leave it at two megabytes. We'll leave the fast RAM at 384, but we need to change the ROM. The ROM included in the package is called kick.a1200.46.143. Uh, that's the package I've got. I bought this a while ago, so it might be different now. However, select that. You will also need a blank hard drive image if you wish to do an installation. It just so happens I have one already prepared. This is a 500 megabyte empty HDF file. We're also going to need some disks. So for, I'm going to add some more disk drives to this to make the installation a bit smoother. To do that, when you're in the F12 menu, uh, which is this menu you see in front of you, if you press plus on your numeric keypad, it will add more floppy drives. You can have up to four floppy drives on your system. It's great. Uh, also, you might as well turn floppy disk turbo on just to speed the process up. So with everything set up, we've got our hard drive ready. We've got our memory set up. Uh, we have um, our kick ROM is the correct one. So if I hit reset now, It should boot up, yep, yeah, right, okay. So this is a blank hard drive image and you'll see that it won't boot. So what we need to do now is we need to insert into our virtual drive the install 3.1.4 disk file and then reset. So now it will try and boot up from the ADF file I've just installed on the mister. Give it a few moments to think about it. We have disk activity. Excellent. So the empty drive here, this is my hard drive. If you've just added a hard drive image, it might come up as DFO, uh, DHO NDOS, in which case you'll need to format it. I'm going to format this again just uh, to show you how to do it. I'm also going to change the name of the volume to system because that's what I like to call my workbench. And then a quick format will do the job. Yes format. There we go. And now we have an empty hard drive called system and we have the install 3.1.4 disk here. Open up install. Double click on English. Or whatever or in fairness, whichever language is uh, preferable to you. This program lets you install release 3.1.4 of the Amiga operating system on a hard drive. It can be used to upgrade an older release, to install from scratch, or to control which languages are available on a hard drive with release 3.1.4 already installed. Brilliant. Proceed. We are going to do it an install of release 3.14. Uh, I'm going to say I'm an intermediate user because I like to brag. Proceed with install. Install for real. Do you want release 3.14 installed in the system partition? Yes, we do. I'd like it to be in English. I'm going to remove the printer drivers as I don't have any printers. I am also going to remove all of the key maps I don't use as I am a British. I'm going to leave the British keyboard selected and hit proceed. 
Right, so now I'm going to ask for the workbench disk. So I'm just going to install that in the, insert that, sorry, in the next available drive. While I'm going to do that, I'm also going to put, uh, let's try fonts, oops, excuse me. And I'm going to have a guess and I'm going to say storage. Uh, there, there's unavoidable, you will have to do some disk swapping, no matter what you do. This shouldn't take too long. A full installation of Workbench 3.1.4 takes up about four megabytes of space. And because we're boosting the floppy drive, it should run nice and quickly. Excuse me one second, I just want to look up something. Excellent. So while we're installing, uh, a couple of things I'm going to do. Once I finish the installation onto the hard drive, I am going to install uh, Picasso and get the retargetable graphics running on the Mister as well, which allows you to run Workbench in high resolution. So you can in fact get a 1080p Workbench if you want to use that. And I'm also going to install the optional glow icons, which makes the system look just a little bit more swanky. Which one do I need to put in it? Amiga install. We are very nearly done. Proceed. Oh, I need to eject all of these discs before I continue. To do that, hit F12, and then when you're over one of the discs, hit backspace on the keyboard, and it literally ejects all of the drives. I'm also going to remove two of the disc drives by pressing minus on my numeric keypad and now if I reset this should this should take a few seconds now just to boot straight into the hard drive that I've created there we go so now we have a, a fully installed workbench uh, 3.1.4 there are um, some updates we can add so why don't we do that now so we have best workbench here And these are updates to 3.1.4. Add some more useful um, devices. It adds more printer drivers. It adds basic. It adds quite a few nice little useful applications onto the hard drive, including basic LHA support and uh, other things like that. You see it installed as LZX and LHA natively, which is nice. It means that your ver version of Workbench can, uh, your version rather than version, your version of Workbench can now literally just decompress files natively. You don't have to worry about finding the app to do it. Yeah, so this uh, update package is called Best Workbench.
One thing this does add, and it's really nice, is it adds a graphical uh, file manager. It's a bit like directory opus. Although I won't be using it uh, for the next couple of things. It was a very elegant operating system, the workbench operating system. You don't have to reboot stuff all the time to make things work generally. It's really quite clever. Once you drop something into the directory, it's just there. We are on our last disk. Ask me to reboot. That's just to clean up some mess, and so I'll do a quick reboot. Oh, and as you can see, it's changed some of the icons. Well, that's nice, isn't it? However, I want the glow icons. So if I go back into my package of 3.1.4 and I put the storage disk in. Now, if I go to Window Show All Files, you'll see there's an extra directory called Glow Icons, and they look horrible at the moment because I haven't, up, I haven't added more colours to the display. But we're going to do that in a few moments. But first of all, I want to copy across these Glow Icons onto my main system. To do that, go to System Shell. And then you need to put this command in, which I am taking directly from the um, Hyperion Entertainment website. Copy DFO, glow icons, forward slash, oops, um, no, ah, there we go. Question mark to sys all. And this is copying across all of the icons. That should be it. Close these down. And now we have horrible looking icons at the minute, but we're about to fix that. So I'm going to eject the storage disk. Now, on one of my videos, I did show you how to use my install RTG disk, which I'm now mounting here. And so we're going to go through this process. So you need to get hold of the disk. It's on one of my videos. Double click install RTG1. This is going to run through where it now installs Picasso. Well, it actually it extracts Picasso to the RAM disk. Picasso is the graphics library. You need to run retargetable graphics. Okay. Picasso 96 install. Proceed, it's a first install, intermediate user, proceed, 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 I'm not going to read the manual, proceed, right, okay, whoops.
Proceed, 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 proceed. Made a mistake there. Right. Now we're going to have to select one of these. We're going to delete it pretty much instantly after we've done it, but we need to do it temporarily. So I'm going to select UAE graphics. We'll install everything. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, system, probably, rather than work. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. Proceed. Proceed, proceed. Proceed. Proceed, proceed. Proceed, proceed, proceed. Proceed. <laughs> And that has installed Picasso. Now we can go to install RTG2. And if there's a, a bit of a, I, I did make, misconfigure my disk slightly and I'll show you what's happened. When I hit F12 and it'll boot up, you'll get an error message as Workbench boots up saying it can't find UAE graphics. I'm going to show you how to fix that as well. There we go. So it, that was an issue there. It, it's only there for a few seconds. If it doesn't bother you, you can ignore it. But what you need to do to remove that error message is go into System, Devs, Monitors, and simply delete the UAE Graphics Monitor icon there. Okay, and that's got to get rid of that. Right. Hello. Please excuse the jump cut. I realized that when I switched my system into RTG mode, it was actually causing my capture cards to not capture it. So I've just had to tweak some of my Mr. Innie settings, but uh, suffice to say, I've tested it and it's now working. Phew. So once you've got RTG installed and you've deleted the UAE graphics monitor, it's just a case of going into your skirt preferences. Uh, it's a bit messy here, but we'll sort that in a second screen mode and then you select the display mode you want uh, you are capable of going all the way up to 1080p here and we're gonna up these colors to I don't know lots and if I hit save it's gonna say you haven't tested it but that's fine I know this works hit use and the next thing you know boom, we have a 1080p workbench I'm going to arrange a cleanup by column. Okay, that probably needs a bit of a working out. But, uh, and then you can snapshot all. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, this is uh, Windows 3.1.4, uh, not Windows, Workbench 3.1.4, <laughs> um, running on a Mister uh, and uh, a simulated A1200, but with graphical acceleration. And uh, yeah, it's, it's quite nice. It's pretty smooth, I think. So things you can do from here, you can add obviously any utilities that you want. Uh, there are web methods of getting this uh, virtual simulated Amiga online, uh, which I'm hoping to do in a future video. But in the meantime, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Thank you so much and bye bye.